Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at using for loops to iterate through one-dimensional and two-dimensional arrays. If we have a look at the code here, you can see we have a simple list. We've got four names in it. And if I want to print all the names from the list, I could say print name 0, print name 1, print name 2, print name 3. And that's fine, it'll work, it's just not very efficient. What if we had 10 names, 100 names, 1000 names in our list? You can have a lot of typing or a lot of copying and pasting. Clearly, there's an easier way to do this, and we're going to do that using for loops. Have a look. This code will do the same as the code on the previous slide, but it's a lot simpler, it's a lot more efficient. So again, we create our list of names, and then we use the for loop to iterate to go through each element in the list. For loop in range 4, colon, print names loop. How does that work? Well, we're creating a variable, counter variable, that will keep track of how many times we're looping. And we're going to loop through that four times. So that's going to become 0, 1, 2, 3. And when it gets to 4, it'll stop. If you remember from the previous video, the first index position of the array is 0, then 1, then 2, then 3. So when we run this program, the value of loop will first of all be 0. So it'll print name 0 which is Paul. Then it loops through again. The value of loop will become 1. It will print Philip, because names 1 will print Philip. It'll loop again. This time the loop counter will become 2. So when we say print names 2, it will print Paula. We loop again. The value of loop becomes 3. Names loop becomes names 3. It will print Philippa. This will print everything in our array nicely and simply. And hopefully you can look at that and think, well, actually, it's very easy to modify that so I can print all the contents of a list or of an array of any length. Let's have a go at a little programming task. Edit this program to print out the names of the students and their scores. There are two arrays here, one which is a list of scores, one of which is a list of names. And we've got most of the code here. We're going to have to work out what we're going to put in here, and then how to print out the name of the student, and how to print out their score. So go away, have a little go at that, see if you can get it working. Shouldn't be too difficult. Let's take a look at the solution. Hopefully we've got that we should use for loop and range 5, because there are 5 items in both lists. We have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So if we use for loop and range 5, that will cycle through each element in the arrays. Then we're going to use print names loop scores loop so that it can go through each item in each list in the correct sequence. Print Joe 23, then it'll print Tom 11, and so on and so forth until all the details are printed. Let's take a look at another activity. Can you use a for loop to calculate and print the total of numbers in this list? So you've got a whole set of numbers here. I've got another variable that I've set to 0. I would like you to iterate through each item in this list, add the scores to the total, and then print out the final total at the end. This is a really important task because when you do your exam, your paper too, there's almost always going to be a list question, an array question, and you're going to have to either come up with a sum or an average for a set of scores. Could be grades or marks or money or anything like that, but this is a very common exam style question. So have a go, see if you can work out how to do this. Hopefully we got that. If you didn't, take a look at this solution carefully, listen to the explanation, and then try it again just to make sure that you understand. So for loop in range 7, 
because of course there are seven items in my list. The scores array has index position 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. When it gets to 7, it'll skip out of the loop. Total equals total plus scores loop. We need to keep using total over here, so it's a running total. We don't want to reset it each time. And we just want to go into the scores list in sequence and pull out each number one at a time. So when we run this program, the first loop, it'll pull out the 12. 0, and it'll say something like 0 plus 12, or that equals 12. It loops around again. This time it's going to go to the second position, and we're going to say 12 plus 9, and then we're going to keep going through it just step by step by step by step by step until we've added together all the numbers in total. And then the last line, we're just going to print out the final total. You can also use loops to iterate through two-dimensional lists. So this is a bit more complicated because we have to use a for loop inside a for loop, a nested set of loops. Usually, the outer loop will cycle through the rows, and the inner loop will cycle through the columns. But you can swap that around quite easily if you need to. Let's take a look at an example. So we have a table of numbers here. And then we're going to use some code to change that into a two-dimensional list. So remember, we've got three lists inside our main list here. So each row becomes one list inside a greater list, just like we discussed in the previous video. I'm going to create a running total of all the numbers here together. So I'm going to create a variable total equals zero. And now here's the key part. For row in range three, colon, indented, for column in range 5, colon, indented again, total equals total plus results row column, and at the end, print total. So if you go back to how we iterated through and added the total together for a one-dimensional list, this is very similar, except for this nested set of for loops. So when I say for row in range 3, I'm using 3 because there are three rows in this table. So remember, 0, 1, 2, there's 3 in total. I say for column in range 5, because again, there are 5 columns. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So what happens when I run this? Well, let's have a little think about it. Let's say we'll keep track of our rows. We'll keep track of our columns. And maybe we'll have a little think about what's going to happen with our totals. So what's going to happen when I run this? Okay, well, for row in range 3, we're going to start with 0, of course. That's the first number. And then it's going to go straight into the next loop. For column in range, well, that's going to be 0. Total equals total plus results row column. Well, row and column at the moment are both going to be 0, 0. So 0, 0 is 78, so it's going to add 78 to the total. So we're going to have a total, of course, of 78 at that time. And then it's going to go back around, and it's going to keep going through the inner loop here. It's going to be stuck here for a while. So the row value is still going to be 0, but the column is going to go up to 1. Total equals total plus results row column. Well, row is 0, column is 1. So this time it's going to add 52. It's going to add the 52 and the 78 together in the total. And then it's going to loop through this inner loop again. So this time the row is still 0. The column goes up to 2. Adds again the total. So we're going to go into results. And it's row 0, column 2. All right, it's got 45. It's going to add 45 to the 52 and the 78 and store that again as total. And that's going to keep happening. We're going to go to row 0, column 3, row 0, column 4. And then we're going to be finished because we'll add it together the 97, the 89 to all the other numbers. So now we've got a total for the whole first row. Now it's going to go back to the outer loop. And we're going to add 1 to the outer loop. And then we're going to go through all the columns again. So if I just go through that very quickly, just to illustrate that, we're going to say row 1, 
column 0. That's the first item we're going to take, which is going to be 67. Add that to the total. Then it's going to be row 1, column 1. Row 1, column 2. Row 1, column 3. Row 1, column 4. And then it's going to skip out again. And this time we're going to change it and it's going to be row 2. Row 2, column 0. Row 2, column 1, etc. So it's going to go through each number and add them all together until it finally prints the running total. So run this, change the numbers, have a play around with it. This is one of the more complicated things that you have to learn. But if you can get the total of a two-dimensional list using a for loop, that will stand you in really good stead for your exam. So we have a little activity here. Modify the code on the previous page to calculate and display the, the average. So here we just came up with the total. Can you modify it to come up with an average number? Have a go. See what you can think about that. Okay, here's the solution. Most of the code is very similar. Just a few extra pieces. We're going to keep a counter. So we need to know how many numbers we're adding together. Again, we've got our two for loops. That's all the same. We've got the total. And then we're just going to add one to the counter each time. So we need to find out how many items there are in the two-dimensional list. There are other ways that we could do this. I'm just using a simple way, adding one to the counter each time we loop round. Then we calculate the average at the end, and the average will just be the total divided by the counter. So we add all the numbers together, we count out how many numbers there are, divide them together, and then print it out. Okay, hopefully you've learned something from this video. As usual, good luck in your studies, and I'll see you in the next video. Good luck!